guys, it's Reagan and welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be a recommendation style video and it's going to be covering a topic I have personally been struggling with for months. The year of 2019 has just been honestly one big reading slump for me. I've still read quite a bit, but like deciding and getting into certain novels has just been so difficult. And so today I've decided to curate a list of books that I would recommend to pick up if you feel like you're in a reading slump. All these books have incredibly engaging, fast paced, plots. They're honestly the kind of stories that grip you from page one. These style novels are what I always kind of turn to when I'm having a really hard time a deciding what to read and two keeping my intention within a story. So without further ado let's dive into the recommendations that should get you hopefully out of that reading slump. The first two books I'm going to chat about is a genre that has honestly been a lifesaver for me and that is angsty YA paranormal e romance. For me, diving into a YA or adult kind of fantasy series that has kind of romance at its center is such a great way to get out of reading slump. They tend to be highly engaging, really fast paced, and honestly like cheesy in the best way. The two books I'm going to recommend today are two books I read this year and really loved. The first one is A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmer. This is a YA retelling of Beauty and the Beast. And believe me when I say that this is not a standard Beauty and the Beast retelling. It's honestly a super original reimagining of this tale and it was so highly entertaining and had so much humor and action and of course romance, angsty, forbidden style love, romance. This follows our main character Harper who lives in our world. She lives a really tough life. Her mother's really sick and her brother and her kind of struggle to pay the bills and just make sure there's enough food on the table. During a strange encounter though in the beginning of the story she's transported to an alternative fantasy world where she's basically dropped in the middle of this Beauty and the Beast plot. This book of course has all the drama and mystery that you would anticipate with this sort of setup but what you might not expect is the humor that exists. Harper is hilarious and she's also just like constantly flabbergasted, of course, by the fantasy setting she's kind of forced to encounter. This is not someone who's like immediately just like used to now wearing a dress and like pretending to be in, you know, a court. She's constantly like referencing how she's using, for example, Game of Thrones to make it through various social scenarios, which is just funny. And as a reader, you can kind of really relate to Harper in that way. This of course is just like a super fast paced, engaging plot and honestly is like a perfect book to pick up if you're feeling like you don't want to read anything because this will hook you from page one. It has very lovable characters, great intrigue and magic, and honestly a romance that will keep you flipping the pages. Another more romance-centered series is the White Hot Kiss series by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This has a full trilogy as well as the first book that is currently out in the spin-off series, which I've also read and enjoyed. These are perfect. This is almost like a reading slump medicine. Tonic, if you will. Um, this is like honestly a well done cheesy YA paranormal romance. Like this is truly that genre, but like done in a really great way. It's set in a world where demons exist and there are people who fight those demons to protect humankind and they're called gargoyles. They are exactly as they sound. They turn into giant stone fighters and kill off demons. We follow our main character who is half demon, half gargoyle. And because of this, she's kind of ostracized in society at large. She's in love with kind of the boy next door character, but then a bad boy demon comes into town and she's forced to confront not only her own emotions, but perhaps her history of being half demon. It is ridiculous, but amazing at the same time. Humor, romance, intrigue, lots of eye contact, lots of rapid heartbeats. It's great. Honestly, the series is what I just have all the books on hand um, if I need anything, if I'm feeling like I don't want to read anything because this is the perfect solution for that. Next up, I have two incredibly fast paced dystopian style novels. Um, the first one being Scythe by Neil Shusterman. It's no secret that this is one of my favorite series of all time. It's now concluded. Every book is incredible, but this is truly a book that's going to hook you from page one. It's just one of the most fascinating and dark worlds that you'll ever encounter and just so gripping and wild what goes down in these pages that you will not be able to put it down. Clay has read this series. Clay works like 80, 90 hours a week and made time to read the series. Stayed up past getting home at like 1 a.m. to read what happens next in this book. So I feel like that is like a perfect example to show how like this book will grip you and make you just want to keep reading it. Um, this is a dystopian style series where humankind has basically solved all of its ills. People no longer die from like famine or poverty or even war for that matter. So therefore, as a way to control the population, um, the world, society has evolved to like grant individuals the right to kill people. And these people are called scythes. It's like its own 
political structure and all of that. And we follow two sites in training and we're kind of thrown into the midst of all the politics that are occurring. It's incredibly fascinating, truly. You won't be able to put this down. I love the series so much. I read the third book and I read it in like a hot second and it's like over 600 pages, so. The next book I'm gonna mention is This Savage Song by Victoria Schwab. I would say honestly, any book by Victoria Schwab is a good one to pick up if you're in a reading slump. Her Darker Shade of Magic series is incredible, as well as this duology, which is more of a dystopian style YA story, but this one I feel like is particularly strong if you are having a hard time getting into novels, again, because of how fast paced this story is. It's also a dual perspective with like shorter chapter styles that kind of jumps between these two perspectives, which for me personally, that type of writing style just, I read books so quickly when it's like that because it's kind of like you're encountering a mini cliffhanger at the end of every chapter, and then you're kind of waiting on the edge of your seat as you go through other perspectives. Um, that being said, there's just basically, you're surrounded by a bunch of cliffhangers and you're trying to figure out how they're all gonna kind of come together in a wild way. It's basically a dystopian world set in a city that is literally divided. There is a wall in the middle of it. It's also a very militaristic style of a world because these two sides have been at war for a very long time. There's also just a lot of inherent danger in this world because there are basically like something has happened and now there are monsters and they will kill people. So people are trying to survive. One side has kind of like weaponized these monsters and there's an individual kind of ruling this society. It's very evil if you get my drift. And then the other sides, kind of like the resistance, trying to protect people themselves, but also everyone else that lives on their side of the wall. We follow two POVs. One is the daughter of this super powerful guy on kind of the evil side. And the other is actually a monster who's helping the good side. And so there's a lot of complexities here. One, as August, our monster character is trying to encounter like what it means to be good. Like, is he in fact inherently evil just because he was born? a monster. And then also we follow Kate. She kind of has to confront her own destiny. Like, does she fall in her father's footsteps? These characters meet. It's amazing. So much action, so much intrigue and adventure. And also just has this kind of like dark zombie-esque, like the world's kind of ended setting. So there's danger around every corner. It's great. And honestly, I want to reread it soon because it's been a long time and I flew through the first books and I loved it so, so much. I think both of them made my top books of the year when they came out when I read them. Incredible stuff. Next, I have The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcaster. This is a true style, whodunit type of story. My favorite personal kind of mystery thriller to read. There's something so classic about it. I feel like I have like a twirling mustache and I'm smoking a pipe or something and I'm Sherlock Holmes now. Um, I recently watched the movie Knives Out, which I also loved. And I feel like if you're a fan of that movie, you would love, love, love this story. This is a book where we follow our main character who wakes up in this house and someone has died. It's Evelyn Hardcastle. We don't know who did it. We don't know the cause of it. And our main character is kind of tasked with figuring all of those things out. But something tricky is going on. He's basically waking up over and over again, reliving the same day, but in another person's body, meaning there's a lot of parallel timelines happening at once because as he wakes up maybe seven bodies in the future, he has the memories and the context of his past lives but his early lives do not. So you're living the story through the eyes of all the different hosts with his like differing knowledge, depending on where along the timeline he is. It's fascinating. There's also people trying to basically stop him from solving this mystery. It's dark, it's confusing, and you just want to know who killed Evelyn Hardcastle. It's so good. I would say too, one of the strongest elements to a good thriller is that you can't guess the ending. I did not guess this ending, but I also could not put this book down at the same time. Incredible, super entertaining, and the perfect book uh, to pick up if you're having a hard time feeling engaged in a story because this will hook you right away. And you're just like, captured because you just want to know what's going to happen. How did it happen? Only one way to find out and that's to read it. These three books I have are just full of adventure and a good time. The first one being The Lies of Luck Lamore by Scott Lynch. This is an amazing adventure story if you just wanted something hilarious and full of a good time but will also keep you guessing and very engaged. This is a story we follow our main character Locke Lamora, who's part of this thief gang him and his friends uh, basically trick rich people and steal all their money but it's more complicated than that and because at the beginning of the story he finds himself 
at the center of a very complicated coup that's occurring in the underworld and he's just trying to figure out how to navigate it along with kind of like the current timeline of the story you also follow Locke as he's growing up you kind of meet him and his friends as children and you kind of see how they became so close and also how Locke acquired a lot of his skills this does two things one it provides lots of amazing character growth and you fall in love with everyone that you encounter it's just so sweet and endearing and I don't want to use the word wholesome because they're thieves, but it's just like a moment in time where you just are rooting for everyone despite them doing a lot of robbing. But two, it kind of gives context to a lot of the skills that are happening present day because you see them, learn it, and then eventually hone it and master it. Well, as I would say, Scott Lynch has definitely crafted an adventure that's full of a lot of mystery. I do not know what Locke Lamore is doing or in the process of doing until it's over. You're kind of like piecing together as you go along like various things they're setting up but you don't know how they're gonna like turn out until they basically start the domino effect. Um, but yeah, this book was amazing. I'm currently reading the second one right now. I loved it so, so much. And it's just so full of adventure and good time and friendship, but also great drama and fantasy. It's great. The book I have is Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. This is the ultimate fast-paced sci-fi YA story that I feel like will really, really just you won't be able to put this down. I read this book in one sitting and one day. I literally started and I could not do anything else until I completed it because Brandon Sanderson, in my personal opinion, is just so good at writing plots where you're just like, what in the world is going on? And when you finally feel like you understand the arc, you get to the end of that tiny arc and realize there was a much bigger arc there the whole time and you were just too dumb to see it. But now you're just like, what do I do? This follows our main character, Spencer, who lives on a planet with a bunch of other humans. It's a human colony. And they're constantly under attack by another alien species called the Krell. Therefore, a military and also being a pilot are super lauded uh, within this world. Not only that, but bravery and almost like aggressive, um, very intense, uh, like showmanship, like showing any type of fear is very, very bad. Spensa has also been kind of ostracized at this society at large because her father, who was a famous pilot, fled in battle. And because of this, she's just viewed as like a coward's daughter and therefore probably a coward herself and not allowed into the military. But one day she finds something in a cave which allows her entrance into pilot school. And from there we go on a pilot school adventure. There's lots of training, space combat, and just like space mystery, lots of cool technology. And honestly, Brandon Sanderson did a wonderful job writing space combat it'll just keep you honestly at the edge of your seat and again there's a whole universe of mystery that Brandon Sanderson is just trying to fool you in so there's only one way to figure it out and that's to read the first one and then read the second one like I just did yesterday and be even more confused but in a good way and the last book I'm gonna recommend is Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett honestly you could pick up any novel by Robert Jackson Bennett I have read them all I have loved them all he has been an author I've encountered this year and honestly has just loved every single one of his books they're all great one of the reasons why I feel like his books are great to pick up is because they are so fresh. He really kind of injects really f new ideas into the fantasy genre, in my personal opinion, either adding kind of a geopolitical thriller element, or in this case, adding like almost a literary magical element, plus religious lore, and just some of the most interesting ways that I personally could never possibly think of. In this world, we follow a thief, and she lives in a fantastical world where it's kind of like a Venice merchant society in that in the city of Foundryside, about 80% are controlled by different merchant houses. They are big walled structures with basically little cities within a larger city. And then the remaining 20% is like a lawless, unprotected bit of land. And that's where our main character lives. The reason why she's an exceptional thief is because the magic system in this world basically is word focus, basically meaning you can change the structure or the behavior of certain materials, like say making a wall weaker if you know its language in an interesting way. So if you write on this wall, you can make it weaker, but only if you know the proper words to do so. And so our main character is a great thief because she can read the language of items as she like encounters them. She doesn't need to know it. They kind of like speak to her. Therefore, she can really easily make her feet quieter on the wood or like break through really strong materials to like sneak into things. So at the beginning of the story, main character Sansia is hired to steal a very impossible object, but because she's such a wonderful thief, she successfully does it. After successfully stealing this object, Sansia feels like her job is done. She's made a lot of money, she can move on, but just by simply stealing it, she finds herself in the center of a merchant house war. Kind of like now the balance between these houses are beginning to shift, which could cause like all out warfare in the city. Um, so that is kind of how the book starts. It's so good. It's almost like combining like ancient theory with 
magic, but like with a hacking element, like they're writing code basically, but it's magic code and it impacts like the world around them. It's just so cool. Anyway, I loved this book. This is one of my top books of 2018. And if you haven't read it yet, I would highly implore you to do so because the second one comes out in early 2020. So it's the perfect time to pick this up and binge read the whole series. Hey guys, those are my books I would recommend to get you out of a reading slump. Let me know down below some books you would recommend for the same purposes. I would love to know. And hey, I never know I'm going to find myself in another reading slump. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon with another one soon. Goodbye.